was a time where cowboys ruled the land. They looked after their cattle and horses, made sure they were taken care of. It's kind of like the shepherd that Jesus talked about. The one that left the 99 sheep to go find the one that was lost. It seems pretty ridiculous until you realize that you were the one. God has rescued us from the darkness and has brought us into his marvelous light. He's given us new life that's full of joy. He's given us a reason to sing, a reason to celebrate. He is in this very place with us. So buckle up. Hold on to your hat. Welcome to Roundup Sunday. Welcome. All right. I hope y'all are ready. Come on, stand up. Swartz, we are so glad you're here this morning to worship. And uh, some of y'all have been waiting for this day for a long time. So I uh, hope you enjoy. But uh, more than anything, let's continue as we always do to to focus on what we're singing about let's sing about the light that we have gone into from the darkness our, our savior has brought us into come on let's sing i saw the light gotta get some hands clapping I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night, now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside, praise the Lord, I saw the light, just like a blind man wandered along, Worries and fears I claim for my own Then like the blind man that God gave back his sight Praise the Lord, I saw the light Come on now! I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light
some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by fly away just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by Away. One thing I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away one more time. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away when I die. And when I die, hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Good morning. We're so glad y'all are here. I feel like I need to say howdy, y'all. <laughs> We're so glad you're here. It's a great day. If you are just joining us and you're wondering what's going on, this is Roundup Sunday for us, and we are rounding up our friends and our family to bring them to Jesus. That's what we're here for, and we want to come and worship him together with them and um, with our family and you as our friends and our faith family, and so we are so excited you joined us. We are um, honored with everyone's presence. And I'm so excited to think about those people that we've invited because I know that God's plans never fail and that every one of us is here for a reason. None of us are here by a mistake. And so God has a word for us today. Let's continue in worship. If you're our guest with us, we are so glad to get to know you and glad to welcome you here. We want you to open your bulletin that you should have gotten when you came in. There's a QR code. You can scan on that with your smartphone device and it lets us know who you are. You also can put prayer requests in there, update contact information if you're a church member um, or a longtime guest with us. And so we are um, so glad you joined us. Let's continue in prayer through worship, in through worship with prayer. Father God, we love you. And we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that we have the ability, the privilege, and the blessing of being able to stand in your presence. And we ask that you be here with us today with your spirit, that God, you would permeate every place and every heart that's here on this campus, God. We pray that your spirit would speak truth because Jesus, when you show up, you change lives. So God, that's what we're asking today, that you change us and you change those around us, that we would be all in for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Does anybody know anything about the living water? I hope that you've experienced the river of life before. Let's sing about that. Come on, stand up. We're going to sing about that river of life that's open to anybody. So if you've never experienced that, you're going to hear about it in this song, and I hope you come to know it today. Here we go. And brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guarantee you'll never be the same. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let that river of life wash it all away. If you've been searching and carrying burdens, if you've been lost and looking for a home, if you've been drifting and something is missing, 
then you should know that you are not alone brothers sisters come on down to that river guaranteed you'll never be the same there's a fountain flowing from the heart of the savior bring your sins and all your guilty stains let that river of life wash it all away Come on down to the river Come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine It's healing in, river of life Come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine It's healing in, the river of life Brother Come on down to that river, guaranteed you'll never be the same. Oh, brothers, sisters, come on down to that river, guaranteed you'll never be the same. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. By the blood of Jesus, everything will change. Let that river of life wash it all away. Come on down to the river. Come on down to the river. Come on down to the river. Let that river of life wash it all away. Right. You can uh, sit, stand, whatever you want for this one. Uh, it's the old rugged cross. I know you're going to know it, so sing along and, uh, and enjoy with Mr. Alex. On a hill far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I've laid down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true it's shame and reproach gladly bear then who call me someday to my home far away where is glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my truth is at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it 
it someday for a crown. Amen. Amen. We just have a, a mix of a few different uh, songs today, and, and here's our, our last one. This is one we want to teach you if you haven't heard it before. It's called The Mercy Tree. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the display of love on that cross. Love that we can't comprehend or imagine or understand why you would do that for us. I just pray that it would, it would bring us to respond in a way today that would, uh, would give you our very best. And uh, help us to, to be more like you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, church. Who wore your boots this morning? All right. I have mine on now that I've borrowed. If I told Carol Dark, I'll probably be barefoot by the end of the day. I'm not so sure about boots, but uh, man, what a, what a great morning and uh, great to hear and, and get to see all the talent that was up here, the fiddle and Alex Hennigan singing for us. Man, he is growing up, isn't he? Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. You've been invited to a party. The invitation is hanging on your refrigerator at home. Does that ever happen to you? A reminder has popped up on your social media. And you plan on going if nothing else comes up. I want to ask you, how many of you look at invitations that way? You, you've been given this invitation, and if nothing else comes up, that, that's what you'll do. You'll, you'll go to that particular party. But if anything else comes up, uh, well, I'm afraid we're just going to have to miss it. Well, in Luke chapter 14, there's mention of a great party. It's the party of the kingdom of God. And invitations have gone out across the world, and and are still going out today. In fact, it may be one of those invitations that got you here this morning on our Roundup Sunday. There is a great banquet coming in heaven for all of those who have put their trust in Jesus to save them. The tables are already being set, yet, unfortunately, many will miss the party because of what we're talking about today. So today I've titled the message, Don't Miss the Party. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. We're going to be looking at verses 15 through 24. If you're physically able, will you stand with me as we read God's Word? We invite those of you on Facebook to join us in reading the Word with us in Luke chapter 14, beginning in verse 15. Here's what it says. When one of those who were reclined at the table with him, Jesus, heard these things, he was talking about the kingdom of God and, and a great banquet. He says, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, this is Jesus talking, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master, and the master of the house became angry. And he said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel people to come, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste of my banquet. Father, today I pray that your word will speak to us. God, that you'll change our hearts and you'll open our minds to really live a biblical life. And God, to understand that we have an invitation that is open to us of all the things that the kingdom of God has for us. 
So, Lord, I pray that we will not miss the party that you have for us ready in heaven. And even as a kingdom citizen here on earth, we give you all the glory today. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. There, there's two things that come to mind out of this passage that are, that are really things that you and I deal with when we're we receive these invitations to a party. It's no different to the party that's going to be happening in heaven at the great banquet feast of the Lamb. So for us, it is to see that making excuses gets in the way. Making excuses gets in the way. Just like today, these people had already received invitations. And now if you give an invitation on, on Facebook, you know, people put, well, I, I might be, maybe, I might be coming, or yes, I am, or no, I'm not. And, and in this case, he believed that these people would want to come. And in this context, he's talking about Jews, Judaism, because when Jesus came, his ministry was among the Jews. So he's saying, the very people that, that I came for, my chosen people, should want to come with me. But it's interesting, he shares here in this passage in verses 15 through 20, three different areas that we make excuses in our lives. And, and I think it applies as much today. The first, he talks about the excuse of, of what the world has for us. This, this first person, he said, oh, I'm not going to be able to come because I have, I have bought a field. And he's, he's doing what the world tells him he needs to do. He, he needs to have more, and because he needs to have more, it requires more of him, and it causes him in the things of this world to be distracted to the things of God. I, I've, got, I've got my own plan, my own purpose, my own thing that I'm about, so, so I don't have time for that. Do you know anyone like that? They're so wrapped up in the world that, that they don't have time for the things of God. And today, we, we find that that's even more prevalent because it's so easy for us to convince ourselves if, if I open up my Uversion app and I have a Bible study or I do open up my open windows and I have a, a, a little devotion or something like that, then, then that's good enough. A prayer before meals, that's good enough. That's letting God know I still know He's there and when I need Him, I'll call on Him. But when it comes to the fast pace of this world and everything this world wants to take from us, we get so captivated, and because of that, we miss out on the things that God has for us. The second group would be those that make excuses because of work. He says, listen, I've, I've bought all these oxen, five yoke of oxen, that's, that's ten oxen that he's bought. Now, this is his work. And it's kind of like a, a man, you know, I, I know some farmers, and I know that surprises you, but I do. And uh, I remember one farmer was so excited telling me about his new tractor. And I couldn't believe, uh, because I'm obviously not a farmer, that tractors have GPS systems on them now and you don't even have to worry where to go or how to fit the lane. It tells you everything to do and it's just like a Cadillac. You get in there, turn on the computer. They have air conditioning in these. Man, don't let these farmers fool you now. It's not as hot as it used to be in those new tractors. They've got air conditioning, GPS. They've got satellite, radio, television. They've got all kinds of stuff in these tractors now, even Wi-Fi, so that they can watch their Netflix while they're going down the road that the GPS is doing for them. Isn't it great to live in America? But that's what I, I pictured that when I was reading this passage. Man, I don't have time to come because I've got to check out my five uh, my five <laughs> groups of oxen, these yoked up oxen. And he's just like, wow, the work, our work, so many times gets in the way of the things of God. And, and sometimes we'll, we'll take promotions and more responsibility on ourselves, not taking into consideration that extra dollars may not even be able to be spent on things I enjoy and the people I enjoy because I'm too busy working. So then there's this third group that he talks about, and this one's a hard one. It's family. Well, I need to be excused because I got married. I have a wife now. 
So I have responsibilities at home. Now, you know, this is an interesting one because there's no one that would, would say that you don't need to love your family. But when our families get in the way of our faith, we have our priorities mixed up. And that was important that Jesus shared that with these people. He's reclined at a table talking with them. They're having dinner with each other. And he says, listen, everybody thinks they want. The, it started this passage saying, oh, to have bread in the kingdom of God. And he says, whoa, wait a minute, let me tell you a story. Because everybody thinks they want that. And, and there's so many people today that, that will do so many things outside of the church and outside of the kingdom of God agenda and say, but we're having quality family time. And the interesting thing is, if we're not careful, that quality family time is creating in our children a, a roadmap for their future that is apart from the things of God. An unchurched lifestyle. Someone that does not perceive that it's a priority to even have a Lord's Day. In your life well Benjamin Franklin said he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else <laughs> that's pretty good isn't it so are your excuses robbing you of an extraordinary life I just want you to think for a minute everybody in here I'm looking across at every age group in here any of us need to to grapple with this question you can't be too old or too young to grapple with this question are your excuses robbing you of an extraordinary life? Yeah, you know, I don't know what my health is going to be like in 20 years, but I tell you, I, I don't want to waste any day that God gives me. Amen? I want to live the extraordinary life that, that God has for me. And if that means that, that I'm going to have to have somebody else to help me, then I'm going to keep talking sweet to Sharon for the next 20 years so she'll help me. Because I want to live an extraordinary life, don't you? Oh my goodness, I haven't met anybody that says, I wake up every day hoping that I have a lousy life. But a lot of us, by our excuses, we cause in ourselves the things that God is saying here. Listen, I have made you, I have purchased you, I have, I have come and put gifts inside of you to use in my kingdom to change people's life. Don't allow the excuses to get in the way. But in Romans 1, 20 and 21, Paul said, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power, his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. He's saying, listen, everything you need to see to know that God is real is right in front of you. Amen. Listen, yesterday we were, uh, we were in the Carolinas and uh, getting ready to go play Appalachian State. And there is no easy way to get to Boone, North Carolina. And where we, uh, we had to stay in a, in a hotel in I know Elk was in the name, some kind of Elk town. I mean, it was a small town. And I said, is this really the best that, that we could do? And the, uh, the football ops guy said, yes, we either do this or we're two hours away from the stadium. You're either 35 minutes away or you're, you're over an hour at least to go the other way to Hickory, North Carolina. So we uh, get on the bus and uh, there's three buses. The first bus was the leader. And he was, he was heading out, and he took off without us, and he knew the route. So he turns right, we turn left, down a death crawl of a two-lane narrow road down a mountain. And there's cars coming around the curve, and we're having to hit the air brakes, and I'm hearing, I'm a CDL driver, so I'm hearing that, dit, 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 and I'm going, those air brakes... If they blow, you know, this is going to be bad. Well, we go down a little further, and there's, there's, you've seen the signs. You've been in the mountains. That they have these signs that say, this is what you're about to do, you know. But we're in charter buses full of people. So there was one U-turn curve, and we get, we get over the hill, and we're going down into that curve, and she hits the air brakes. And we found out that, that our uh, defensive bus 
was now stuck on the road. And he couldn't back up because he was going to tear his bumper off. He had taken it too, too sharp. Well, now we've got people backed up for days going both ways. And we're supposed to be at the football game. So they're having to get everybody off the bus. It's cold. It's rainy. And they're having to back that bus up and swing it around. Well, when they do, I, I don't really know what was going on. But, but our driver decided, I'm going to show, show them how it's done. And she hits her gas, and we're going for the rail. And I'm thinking, she better turn. She better turn. And then she hits her air brakes, and they go, doot, 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 doot. And I looked around at everybody on our bus, and I said, if you have never needed a chaplain, you need one now. I would like to give a short devotion and prayer before we meet Jesus, because, I mean, we were about to go over the side of that mountain. And I'm telling you, it, it made a difference in my life, I could clearly perceive that the situation was bigger. But when we got past that and we, we got down in the valley a little bit and it opened up, the beauty of the changing leaves, the beauty of the, of the mountains, man, it's beautiful up there. And I had a couple of the, the guys tell me, man, if people don't know there's a God, they've got to be able to see it now with just the grandeur of his creation. That's what Paul's talking about here in Romans. And it says, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking. That's what happens when we make excuses. We, we, we just begin to come up with stuff to miss the blessings of God. And their foolish hearts were darkened. Don't miss the party by making excuses. And don't miss the party by limiting love, by limiting love. These three groups of people, it's really three people, but it's three groups of people, three opportunities that were excuses, work, world, and family. Now he comes back and he says to his master, which is God the Father in this story, he says, we have gone and we've talked to these people and they're not coming. So you see this banquet is set up. They worked for days to get it ready, and now no one is coming. There's nothing worse than planning a party and having nobody show up. Anybody feel me? And they all had good excuses in their mind. So he says, I want you to go out, and I want you to find any and everybody. He said, we've already done that. So then he says, go out into the highways and the byways. What I love about the groups of people he's talking about, you have to understand the culture. In that culture, if somebody was crippled, blind, or lame, they believed that their parents or they had done something wrong that had caused them to not be loved by God. Isn't that an awful thought? But that's what they felt in that day. If you had any kind of handicap, then obviously... You, you or your parents had done something wrong that, that God was taking out on you. But here is God in this scene, and he's saying, no, that's the people I want around me. Forget all the people that think they have it all together. They're making excuses, all the people that think they have it all together. But, but bring in the poor. Bring in the people that know they have a need. And he says, boy, we brought those people in. And then he says, go out everywhere. And I love this word, compel them. Compel them to come in. And just try to drag them with you is what he's saying there. Drag them back with you so that they can be a part of this incredible party of the kingdom of God. It's everyone, everywhere mentality. There's no limits on God's love. But, but a lot of times, some of us in this room may think, well, you don't know what I've done. Or, or you don't know where I've been or you don't know my family, or you don't know my secret. And I'm going to tell you this morning, you cannot put a limit on the love of God because it's limitless. He loves you. The problem is not with God. The problem is with us. It's with us putting limits on the love of God. In fact, Rick Warren, he said, God's love is like an ocean. You can see its beginning, but not its end. I love that. You've been to the ocean, and you look out, and it's just vast. 
and you think you see the end of things and there's a ship out there and you realize there's water beyond the ship. It's just vast. His love for us. And we can't put limits on that love because His love for us is unconditional. Our lack of love for Him is seen in our sin that creates a separation between us and God. And it's our sin, it's our choice, it's our desire not to love Him that that creates the chasm. But His love for us has been made sure through Jesus Christ. So the question is, are you putting limits on the love of God? And listen, this goes two ways in this room. Let's just, let's just have, have a little honesty session here. For the Christians in this room, we have to grapple with, we really believe there are people that we probably don't need to invite to church. We don't want to admit that, but we're like, oh, they, we already decide for them they would not be interested. And, and I'm not sure that I would want them to come and people know that that I'm friends with them or that that's my family hello so for us as Christians we have to do the work of being honest with ourselves and saying, am I putting limits on other people am I saying they wouldn't be interested and they might be I am forever amazed by the work of God in people's lives people that I have thought that I thought oh they wouldn't be interested but then I get in conversations with them and I find they're very open and interested It's just that we as Christians have already decided that, well, they want to go to hell. And that is not true of many people. I can't say that of all people, but of many people, the real issue is not the the lost. It's the saved thinking that the lost want to stay lost. Oh, but there's that other group that we've already mentioned today, and that's those that are in this room that feel like what you have done is cancel God's love for you. And you know, I used to think that that was just with lost people, but the longer I've been alive, I find that there are people in their senior adult years that are missing out on an extraordinary life because of old past sins and regrets that they won't let the grace of God deal with. And they won't let the forgiveness of God have. So we come in and we say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I've done all that. Jesus is Lord. He died on the cross for my sin. I'm good. But are we really good? Or are we limiting the love of God ourselves on our own lives? Oh, listen, I can't answer that for you. But I pray you'll grapple with that today. Ephesians 3, second part of verse 17 through 19 says, And and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with The Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. It's wide, it's long, it's high, it's deep, the love of God for you. So don't miss the party. Don't miss heaven. And don't miss the great banquet of God by making excuses and limiting love. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that through the world, that the world might be saved through Him. You see, it's all about Jesus saves. Jesus comes to save. And Jesus wants to save you today. So will you respond to his voice? Father, today, all across this room, I pray that, Lord, you will do a work. And I pray that, God, you'll help us to see that you have invited us into your presence And God, you desire for us to know you and to be led by you. And God, your love is limitless. It's just my sin that puts the limits on it. So Lord, I pray for anyone in this room that has never put their faith and trust in you and 
their sin has got them grappled, but they, they want their life to change. They want your salvation. I pray that today they would say, yes, Lord, I, I admit to you that I'm a sinner, but I believe that Jesus died for me. And I confess Jesus is Lord of my life. Lord, would you just, would you just do a work in that, that man, that woman, that student this morning to say Jesus does love you and he has come to save you. And I pray for the Christian in the room that the Lord has either been making excuses or putting limits on your love. Lord, I pray that you'll do a work in us to set us free by your grace and by your mercy. Lord, that we would be free to serve you and to love you like you love us. We'll give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Today you have an opportunity to respond. This altar is open if you need to pray and talk to the Lord. Scarlett and I are here at the front for any decisions that anyone needs to make today. Maybe you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You come. We would love to talk with you about how to become a Christian. Maybe for you, you need a church home. And you would say, this is the church I believe I want to use my gifts and talents in. Why don't you come? Let us know. We would love to help you get started in being a part of the sports family. Will you stand with me? Let's sing together. been a good day hey amen let's give the Lord a hand
I didn't even preach as long this morning. Mike is dead. The battery said, you've said enough. Amen? Don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Um, this morning, uh, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate you for being here this morning. I hope that you, if you're a guest with us, have taken time to fill out that Connect card with the QR code. If you don't know how to do that, we do have that available in the Welcome Center. And we have a gift for you if you're a guest with us. We would love for you to uh, take, take some time to come out there. I'd love to get to greet you. And if you're looking for a connect group where to plug in this morning, we'll be happy to help you with that as well. Today is a busy day, but it's an exciting day. This afternoon from 4 to 6, we have our community-wide carnival. And uh, many of our connect groups are involved in that, and I'm excited about it. If you have a uh, trunk or treat, just remember you need to be there by 3, set up around 3.30. Uh, have, that, have that pretty much ready by 3.30 because people always come. You know, it's kind of like when you do a garage sale and you say it starts at 7 and they show up at 5.30. You been there? Um, that's that's kind of the way this carnival goes. And there's going to be a lot of people there. So uh, you come and, and help with that. The deacons are going to be here to take things over at 1.30. If you have a truck and you're willing to, to help us uh, get things set up and to bring them back, we would love to have you. You don't have to be a deacon to serve in that way. And you may say, hey, I have a truck, but I'm not able to lift stuff. Still come at 1.30. We could use you. It just, uh, like Scarlett says, many hands make light work. So we would love for, for your help on that. And uh, it will close down at 6, and we'll be probably done with everything by 7 o'clock. So be praying for that and come and, and join in on that. We would love to have you. You see some other announcements that are there in your bulletin this morning. I need to very quickly... Uh, call us into a special business meeting. We uh, have a recommendation that we have to deal with today. So it's from our finance committee and our building and grounds committee. They have been working behind the scenes to work on a project. You know next week is Big Give Sunday. One of those major projects is we have to get new air conditioning and heating units for this building. And being today's America, those units are eight weeks plus out to even have them here, have them shipped here. So we, we couldn't wait until business meeting to have that discussion. So this comes from the Finance Committee and the Building and Grounds Committee. And what they are recommending is that we buy two brand new units for uh, air conditioning and heating in, in this facility. And it requires us to take $45,000 out of our reserve restricted fund. And the goal would be that once we have Big Give Sunday next Sunday, that would take care of some of that. That is not the complete cost of the project. That is for the units. So these committees are working really hard, uh, making sure that we're getting the best deal we can. And that is very difficult in today's workless society. There are just a lot of uh, companies that won't touch it. And uh, we have some companies that have been willing to give them bids, and they're going with the one that they feel is the best for us. Our situation, just to let you know before we do a show of hands vote, once we get into the winter, one of these units, the heat does not work. So you just need to know that, that, that it is out. Another unit is working by uh, some duct tape, basically. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's cold, it can get cool in here, but once you get to second service, if you ever come to second service, you realize that the room has, has gone 15, 20 degrees higher and there's nothing we can do about it. So um, this comes from them. The recommendation is that the church would take $45,000 out of our reserve restricted to go ahead and order these two units that will be, uh, that will be put in the place of the old units and uh, money that comes in from the Big Give Sunday after ministry budget will go to this project to offset this project. So I need to ask, are there any questions before we vote? Coming from two committees doesn't require a second. So I'm just going to ask you if you agree with that. And here, before you, I'm not pressuring you. I'm just telling you, if you like to sweat in church, vote no. Or if you like to freeze in church, vote no. But if you like it just right in the name of Jesus, vote yes. 
God has provided the finances for us to be able to do it. That may be one of your questions. So uh, God's graciously done that. So if you are in favor of us making this purchase and getting these units headed our way, do so by raising your right hand. Okay. All opposed, same sign. And it passes. I hate to do that at the end of a worship service, but we just had to do it. Thank you so much, church, for being willing to do that. Scarlett, would you come and stand with the Wheelers this morning? These are the Wheelers, my friends. They came here, uh, both Christians. Uh, they've been visiting our church for a while, and they've kicked the tires. They've met with the pastor. They've asked me the hard questions, and they are excited about becoming a part of the Swartz family. So would you welcome the Wheelers this morning to Swartz? Amen. Amen. And I know you'll want to come by and welcome them and give them the, the handshake of fellowship or the fist bump or whatever we do these days. Uh, why don't you stand with us this morning? As you do, this month is, uh, today's the last day in October, and you've probably seen some things around about being Pastor Appreciation Month. We didn't just take a specific day, but I just wanted to give you a little something and say how much we love you and appreciate you on behalf of the church and staff. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father, it is indeed a blessing to serve and, Lord, to, to be a part of this fellowship. And, God, we just pray today for the Wheelers as they join us that, God, they will, they will sense the love and the desire to serve our Savior. And, uh, Lord, that they'll just be enveloped in that and welcomed here. Lord, I pray that for everybody in this room, that, God, we would experience your love. And, Father, that we would remove any excuse that would keep us from the extraordinary life that you have for us and the extraordinary gift of heaven. And we give you all the praise for all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.